Hey everyone, welcome back to the Anderson Bros Outdoors. I'm Jake, and today we have a friend with us. Hey Bush, you gonna say hi? Huh? No? Alright. Anyway, today we're going to go over updates and what I've done to date to the Phoenix RTR. So, before I get into that, if you haven't already, jump on over to the 300 sub giveaway video. If you're already a subscriber, like and comment on the video. Uh, otherwise, subscribe, like, and comment on the video, and enter to win the Traxxas Toolkit and the Accessories Kit for a 10 scale rig. All right, let's jump into this. So everyone knows about the Phoenix RTR. Uh, it comes with a full ready-to-run suite, including the batteries for the controller. The only thing it doesn't come with is the uh, battery to power the truck and the charger for that battery. Today I'm going to do a little uh, deep dive overview slash review of the truck. I've had probably 10 or more batteries cycled through it and I kind of just want to give my impressions of the truck, good, bad, and whatnot. We're going to start with the electronics. The reason for that is I'm going to start with the remote. So let's set the truck aside. The remote and receiver system I think are good enough to get anyone going. For anything more than leaving it stock, I would uh, add this remote and uh, receiver as one of the things that I would replace sooner than later. Uh, the reason I say that is uh, this is a pretty cheap system. I think you can buy the remote for like 25 or 35 bucks, uh, which is not necessarily a bad thing. What makes it a less desirable, I'll say, is uh, it does have a delay. So there's a delay in the throttle uh, and there's also a slight delay in the steering. It can be rather annoying at times, especially if you're in the middle of a, a more challenging climb or what have you, and it just decides, hey, I'm, I'm gonna barely do anything, and so you give it a little bit more throttle, and then the next thing you know, your whiskey throttled, and the truck is upside down, inside out, and all over the place, right? So, um, conceptually, controller is awesome. It is four channels, so it does, it can control the overdrive and the dig. However, in practice, not my favorite. Uh, what I do like about the controller is that it is nice and snug in your hand. Uh, it isn't huge and bulky. And then it does break down into two pieces when you go to travel. All of that, though, is or not because the, the connection between the controller and the receiver is not fast enough. I'd rather have a stock Traxxas system over this. Next, uh, we'll move into the ESC and the motor. So this is the stock uh, ESC and the stock motor. I didn't necessarily have any issues with this motor. Uh, it is a 35 turn crawler motor. We reuse this motor so we'll get a better review on it uh, in the very near future. I didn't have any problems per se with this combination. I think it was more the controller but I immediately pulled this these electronics out and put in a Fusion Pro uh, ESC motor combination for $149.99. Not saying that this option is terrible, however the Fusion Pro is just a phenomenal motor. So um, no issues with the ESC and the motor. And then the servo. So the servo is actually in the SCX-10 Pro and it does a pretty decent job. Uh, it's, it's not uh, earth shattering by any means, but for an RTR servo, uh, it does actually do pretty well. It would be on the list of things to upgrade. For a stock truck, it will get the job done. It just won't do it how you want. Uh, with that being said, you will have to program the remote to allow for more th more uh, turning radius because out of the box, it is limited to 60% turning radius and you need it to be like 80 to 90%. What that means is that, uh, so you can see here that our wheels or are, are tires are straight. So out of the box, you can only turn like this much with the stock controller at 60%. However, if you migrate that to 80%, you'll get a lot more turning. Anyway, Servo has been replaced with a uh, Savic 1210 SG. Um, leaves a lot to be desired. Definitely don't recommend the Servo. Uh, it is in the link in the description below, but I would not run it. Uh, it doesn't, I don't know, it fades pretty quickly. So. I would recommend getting something more powerful. I think my favorite servo today is an MKS servo. Again, I'll leave it in the description below. It's in my Portal Cherokee build. So the XJ truck, uh, that servo is the most responsive and the most powerful servo I've used to date, uh, including uh, the Reef Triple Four. So um, outside of the six scale anyway. So I would highly recommend one of those and they're pretty cheap. I think they're like 115 bucks. So 
very, very good. On that note, I will be doing a video on uh, servos and I'm, I've am i got, I think, 15 to 20 different servos in my Amazon cart and I will be testing them. Uh, I'll be doing three tests at minimum, a test to measure the speed at which it turns, a test to measure the torque rating, I guess, if you will. And then potentially the third test, I would like to set up a mechanism to um, to take its torque limit, subtract a, a very small amount, and then see how many times it can turn one way and the other before it starts to fade and lose power. So stay tuned for that. That should be awesome. Back to the Phoenix. Uh, Servo, Savix, not recommended. Uh, at least the 1210 SG. So I did put the stock uh, skids back on this truck um, for some testing. I do have the metal skids from Rock Pirates that will go back on at some point. Uh, and then I do have some cheap Amazon servos. I think I paid $25 for four of them. Uh, they are controlling overdrive and dig on my other vehicles. Again, link is in the description below. Uh, and then for batteries, so I use XT60 connectors for everything because that's what my charger has. Uh, and these Z batteries, they're 1500 mAh, uh, 120 C discharge rate. Uh, they are 3S and they work really, really well. Uh, you can get two of them for like 30 to $35. Uh, you can't really beat them. Uh, they last uh, 30, 30 minutes to an hour uh, crawling around with them. And so, yeah, they're just really, really powerful, good batteries. I think that covers the electronics. Let's move into the truck itself. So uh, you can see the body here. Uh, this is how it comes. It's obviously a little beat up, scratched, maybe broken in some places. Uh, so what's really cool is it does come with a grill insert here. Uh, this, the headlight covers are actually um, the body itself, part of the body, uh, which is kind of cool and interesting. Uh, and then you have on the back side of that, uh, you have the you have the retainer piece that holds the body to the chassis. Uh, and then you have your headlight boxes where you can put actual lights in it. Uh, the RTR, as we all know, does not come with the interior, nor does it come with the bedsides. Save money, which is completely fine. However, since it doesn't come with an interior, it does leave a lot of open space due to the windows. Definitely not a bad thing. Just know that going into it, uh, you are saving some weight. Something that's really cool, and what a lot of manufacturers don't actually do, is uh, these door handles are added right so they're actually a, a screw-on door handle so here's the other side so it adds to the realism of of the scale and then moving to the back you have your uh, plastic tube frame bedside um, <clears throat> which is more of a pre-runner off-road rock crawler slash frame and traditionally you, you would have some sort of a shock uh, or even coil over and damper set up on attached to the bed uh, for your travel. And then here you can actually mount a spare tire. That is the body, which I don't know, I'm, I'm not a really a huge fan of this body. I think that this power wagon look is way overplayed. Uh, and I personally, I'd like to see something else. I just you know, just me though. It does work. It does look good. You know, it is what it is. All right, moving into the truck. So as we all know, uh, this is not the stock truck really by any stretch. The only thing that it still retains from the factory is the the axle guts, the transmission, and the drive shaft, and the shocks. Everything else has been updated or changed. Oh, the tires too, but that's not really the chassis. So uh, let's start at the front, work our way to the back, and we can go over every detail. So the chassis itself is actually a Rock Pirate Interceptor chassis. Uh, it does have the uh, Rock Pirate uh, Ecto servo mount. And then uh, I also have the Rock Pirate skids for it. But if you look in the front here, I actually just redesigned this bumper because I kept breaking them. Uh, so check Thingiverse, I have updated it. It is free, download it, print it, use it, I don't care. Um, so I redesigned this bumper, I made it more solid and uh, I used 100% infill when I printed this and now I'm really kind of hoping that it doesn't break as easily. Uh, I also widened the mounts for 
the pin for the chassis to go through so it does does actually keep these from breaking at least i'm hoping that's what happens the skid itself is 77 millimeters wide i think that the frame is supposed to taper in however uh, as i've stated on a previous video i'm just not prepared to do that yet so uh, i did make a spacer here uh, to accommodate that uh, for the servo mount winch mount so there's a spacer here uh, to accommodate that and then i also made the spacer in the rear again these are 77 inches they come in the the, the thingiverse kit so uh you can see that the shocks are stock uh the uh the really the only other thing that i changed were the skids but i haven't actually put them back on yet so uh, they're not here i'm using the stock ones for now uh, which allows me to retain overdrive however i did create a bracket uh to bolt into the chassis to be able to retain overdrive with a micro servo still testing that we'll release it once it is uh, validated and i think that's it for the the chassis itself uh you can see that we do have some sweet uh hobby sole wheels here i, I actually really like these the only thing i don't like is that traditionally your wheels come in three pieces at least the beadlock wheels that are aluminum they have the beadlock lip and then the actual wheel itself the outer wheel comes apart and you'll have six screws on the inside the inside of the wheel this side in here right this wheel is not like that it is a one piece wheel and the only place you can screw in is the the beadlock so if i were to change these tires i would have to pull out all of these screws and it's just not i don't know um personally i i really love the wheels however i'm not a huge fan of having to pull out a million screws to change tires so one of the biggest upgrades though that I've completed, as you can see here, are these awesome axles. So these are Vanquish F10 straight axles that I have replaced the plastic housings from, and they are uh, green. So I saw these in, on Facebook and I thought I had to have them. And so purchased them and I put them on. Now, unfortunately we haven't actually filmed part two of the SCX10 Pro versus the Phoenix RTR due to weather and other uh, variables outside of our control so this is going to make it uh, a bit skewed uh, unfortunately uh, that's just how it is uh, we'll see what happens uh, surprisingly enough these aluminum axles don't weigh much more than the plastic ones so I think uh, I did a weight comparison on them and um, I don't know it was like 20 uh, 20 grams or something more than this the plastic one so it's not a huge weight difference. It's really not a huge advantage. Uh, the pl plastic would actually slide better over rocks. So, And then finally, the last upgrade that I did is I do have uh, some high clearance links on the bottom in the front and the rear. I'm not sure if these helped or not. I almost feel like they really just allowed it to get better high center. Uh, the reason that I say that is the non-high clearance links, they fed the wheel, right? These don't really feed the wheel they just kind of allow you to go over more of a, more of an angle um but then you're just stuck right so you're stuck right here where you're not close to your tire hitting i don't know maybe it's me i don't would i do it again absolutely high high clearance links but i don't know if they're actually worth it or not in both front and rear with that being said you see the truck you see the updates uh, one other thing that I forget to mention in almost every video is these tires inserts. So I did design and print out the inserts for these tires. They do make a world of difference. The front ones are specifically designed for these Wild Peak uh, tires, and you can see that they make it a little wider. So you can see that I'm actually running different inserts in the front versus the rear. Uh, so these, uh, again, I, I did specifically print them out for these. Uh, and then these one in the rear, uh, these are the 117 millimeter inserts. Uh, and then I, I just shoved them in there because uh, I didn't want to wait for another set of these to print. You can see that they actually look really good right? with these, these inserts here. Again, link to Thingiverse is below. You can download them, print them. Uh, and then on the printing subject, uh, I would highly recommend using either the Micro Center TPU or I believe it's Overture uh, from Amazon. Uh, I've used several different types of TPU and those two are by far the easiest to print with and they also have the best looking print result. Would definitely recommend those. This is really where this truck is landed. Uh, it's pretty much in its final form 
Uh, I'm, I'm actually very, very happy with the truck. It does a lot of really uh, challenging climbs. It's very smooth. In some of the videos, you do hear some clicking, and, I, and that's the drive shaft, the rear drive shaft, and I'm not sure how to fix that outside of buying new metal ones, uh, which I will at some point. So um, just know that that's, that's what that is. So I'm gonna go through some things that I don't like, and then I'm gonna go through some things that I do. So what I don't like about the truck is the stock radio system. I think if anything, I would if, if I would change anything out of the box, it would be the radio. Uh, the radio and the receiver are just, leave a lot to be desired. And that's after running it for a while. My initial impressions were that it was decent, but um, you know, I, there's just so much, there's so many quirks to it, I guess, that uh, this is probably the first thing that I would change. It would tame down the motor, it would fix the steering, it would do a lot of things that a lot of people are complaining about. So first thing I would do is probably switch that out for something cheap, uh, maybe a radio link, uh, four channel or five channel or a fly sky or something uh, that is, we'll say a better quality, but also is just works. The second thing that, that I wasn't super impressed with is ESC. So the ESC, the only way you can make modifications is with this little jumper. And, you know, I, I don't know. If it were me, I would immediately jump to a 1060 or 1080 and get the desired output. The final thing that I really couldn't stand was the steering servo. Uh, I immediately replaced that. Uh, it was just, it just didn't do the job it was supposed to do. Outside of those three things, the truck is absolutely perfect out of the box. What I do like about it is that it is such great quality. For what you're paying, the quality is just phenomenal. Putting the axles, I mean, obviously this is a kit that comes ready to run. You don't have to put it together, but if you have the pleasure or the opportunity to actually put one of these trucks together from a kit, you'll, you will understand just how much thought and how much precision goes into Vanquish's products. Uh, putting the axles together, I mean, the, the everything, it just, it just works very smoothly. It's all, I don't know, it's, it's almost like every single part that they build is built by hand to the perfect tolerance because as you put it together it's so seamless it's none of it uh, ever feels like it's uh, binding or nasty or whatever the case is now granted if you put it together wrong or uh, if you potentially don't shim something that you're supposed to there's obvious reasons that it wouldn't actually work as it's intended as with any other manufacturer there are missing parts and pieces as we saw with the axial so everything is is just at such a quality that that it's it's enjoyable um because you're getting exactly what you're paying for and it just works right so um yeah transmission is phenomenal it keeps the motor down up front down low i think if you were just to buy the right just the transmission is 180 dollars. the axle kits uh, i think in plastic with the full guts and everything uh, the front is 120 ish i think and then the rear is right around the same price point so for what you're paying for essentially the entire truck uh, if you were to buy it separately the axles and transmission alone are going to cost you around four hundred dollars so uh, if that gives you any indication and people purchase them all the time obviously this one doesn't have the stock frame anymore uh, that's not because the stock frame is not adequate that is because i wanted to go a different direction with this truck uh, so uh, if if you're watching this and you think oh i have to have this rock pirate chassis uh, don't feel like it's a requirement. One of the other things before I continue on is you can actually add the SCX-102 parts to this, meaning that you can put the SCX-102 uh, brass knuckles on here uh, and then other axle parts. Make sure you uh, do your, your research before purchasing anything. With that being said, you can leave it all stock, uh, add some, some brass uh, weights up front, uh, you can add some brass hexes to the wheels. You can even get some, some brass wheels if you'd like, and you would have a awesome truck right out of the gate. However, the Rock Pirate chassis is really cool. And if you do want to do this, go this route, uh, I would encourage it. There's one other nitpicky item uh, that I wanted to talk about. It's the front axle and the Panhard bar. So I don't think that from the factory, the screw is long enough in the, the panhard bar that mounts to the axle itself. I actually ripped this out and I've seen other people that have talked about it and they've they've done the same thing. So right here where, 
I don't know if you can see this, but I'm going to try. So right here where the axle connects to the panhard, uh, or the, yeah, the axle connects to the panhard bar, uh, the stock plastic axle, uh, the screw doesn't go all the way through it. And I think that it should at least bottom out. Um, because as I stated, I was doing a very trivial climb and started, the truck started to fall. I turned and tried to mitigate it and continue the climb. And then all of a sudden I didn't have any steering. Well, that was because the fan hard bar had ripped out and it had ripped out from the axle. The quick and easy fix to this is go to like Ace Hardware or something. Hey there, buddy. So you can get an M3 screw uh, that is, I don't know, probably 10, 10 to 14 millimeters. I don't know exactly the measurement off the top of my head. And then you can get a nut for it. So you can put the screw through the plastic housing and then put a nut like one of these uh, lock nuts on it and keep it in place. And it actually works a whole lot better uh, because you can't rip that screw out uh, any longer. The threads are probably gone at that point uh, if you've ripped it out. So... Uh, the nut really helps keep it in place. Uh, highly recommended. I know I'm kind of jumping all over the place. What are you doing? In terms of the truck, I would say uh, good, as I've stated. I mean, everything just works. Um, obviously, there are some, some things that I would change, but everything just works. The tires are actually pretty decent. That's why I've, I've kept them on here. Uh, I have been trying out some other tri tires to see how they perform, but these actually work pretty well. Uh, for being stock tires. Uh, they certainly work a lot better than the stock kit tires. Those are very hard and uh, not not the greatest. I think these are a little bit too soft, honestly. They're a little too thin and too soft. Um, I'd like to see them maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe halfway between these and the stock uh, tires that come with the, the Phoenix kit. With that being said, I'm going to wrap the video up here. Uh, I have gone over the entire truck end to end. And, and really giving you some feedback. I think uh, overall, driving the truck the way it sits, I mean, I, like I said, I've had a, a lot of hours doing it. Uh, I don't know, I just, I just have so much fun every time I do it. I, it's like, you know, you, it's like, yes, I get to go out, the weather's good. Uh, and even though it's not good, some days it's like 30 degrees and I'm out there like, you know, trying to, to stay warm and drive and keep my hands hands warm and it's, you know, I just forget about it, right? It's like, I get done, it's like, oh man, my hands are freezing. Um, but in the moment, you know, it's just so much fun. It makes you want to drive it more uh, because of its capabilities and how much fun you can actually have with it. And so I don't really, you know, there are some things that I drive that I don't really get that feeling. It's like, it's almost like a chore. It's like, okay, it's, it feels like a job because I have to record it. And it's just not, you know, I don't know. It's just not as fun. But with this, with, with this Vanquish RTR, I have a lot of fun driving it. And I, you know, I don't ever feel like it's, it's a job at all. I feel like, man, this is, you know, this is awesome. I get to come out and run this thing again. So thanks for watching. Please like, and subscribe. Otherwise, uh, have a fantastic day and until next time.